let me hear how you feel inside. You African, I know you're scared inside. You African, but I know your future's bright. You African, but let the truth say. No matter what I say or do, then I've been thinking that you're holy. You're on the world and you know. Welcome to Let's Talk Africa with Ms. Spider. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode where we're going to be talking about the, um, the topic we spoke about a few weeks ago on the live on Facebook about English speaking. So today I am joined by my beautiful sister, Mrs. Chido Hassanen, who is my older sister and she's a mother to three beautiful children and Say hi to everyone, Miss Chido. Mrs. Chido. Hi, everyone. <laughs> just as giggly as you. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm just gonna read um what I what the post was about from a few weeks ago. So we say it, why do we make fun of each other? Does it reflect our own insecurities? Or are we embarrassed um, of speaking Shona on Delele? Um, those in the diaspora, why is it our children cannot speak or understand our vernacular language, our Zimbabwean vernacular language? Um, so that's what we're going to be delving on today because my sister's kids speak Shona and they are very young. So this is where I come from where like, if she can do it, why can't we all do it? So, Before we move on, though, I need to say Zimbabwean vernacular languages because I think we discovered there are many. There's okay. 16? 16. Ooh, so yeah. You said 16. She's already correcting me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so Mrs. Chido, I'm just going to call you sis. Um, can you can tell me, tell us your point of view on this before we go deeper into the story? Oh. oh, okay. You, you you brought many points, but I have to like, try and narrow it down. But I guess the one that sticks about out is the the whole measure of intelligence yeah. thing, mm -hmm. which, having lived in two Western culture countries, where the people are born and raised to speak English, uh -huh. but you have conversations with people and you realize, Kuti. There's nothing there. For me, it just, those shows where Vanutura, some guy from wherever, and ask him, what does this mean? And the guy doesn't know what it means, and then they post them on. Mm -hmm. I really hate those shows because we, we already have this, People, people already have this view that, oh, poor Africans, grown up in poverty, they know nothing. Exactly. And then we post these things of people who don't know English and it's equated to knowing nothing. Next, they don't know English. Ask this person the question in their language and they'll exactly. know. Exactly. Like, what, 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 anyway. And also, if it was balanced, could he, they ask six people and three know and three don't, and then mm -hmm. you post all three, then you then you're showing like a, you know like that diversity. So the only two ones you don't know. Exactly. There's no no one knows. Exactly. And then they laugh at us. And then and then they, and then they laugh. Yeah. And I don't think it's funny. I think I don't it's think just it's funny either. Yeah. I've I've had many uh discussions, well debates with people here where they will assume that they know something because I'm African and English is not my first language. And I'll be like, dude, I'm from a country that had great education. My grammar is amazing compared to what you're saying. Kind of like, come on. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. And like, it even shows, it makes it seem like us as black people are not united because then we're already putting ourselves in classes where like, I know what pharmacists mean and this person doesn't know what pharmacists mean. So I can laugh at them because they don't know what pharmacists mean. And we were talking about the Black Lives Matter. How can we be united if we can, if we're not even united in the smallest thing, so, so like, like language and we're laughing at each other. 
Yeah, I don't know what, what what's this divisive spirit that's just over us. Yeah, that the it's it's and like well, like you said, when you when you when you move out of Africa and then you come to countries where you you meet people from Kazakhstan, people from Russia, people from all this, and they cannot speak English. They are white, but they can't speak English. It literally opens up your eyes. Like, ah, but you're supposed to be white. <laughs> you, know, you know, after I had been in Oz two weeks, I think I met because because you know you get there and you still think Urukumusha and you like talk to everyone on the bus. Yeah, that's not how they be by the way. But I was still like, hi, I'm Kida, and I was speaking to this. I spoke to a few different people. Varuku taught a broken English, mm-hmm. right? Where you, you drop the words, where you come from? Where, where, where. Yeah. And then I say, I'm from Zimbabwe. How long have you been here? Two weeks. <gasps> you learned good English in two weeks? No, I learned good English in my country because we have a great education system. Yeah, like, they, they, they literally assume I'm coming from this uneducated black pit. Mm-hmm. And in two weeks, in two weeks of learning English, I was speaking like this. And then in Australia, how many years? And they say, where you come from? <laughs> and yeah. what about what about all these jokes of like, you know, like on TV when they're portraying someone from Africa, they will never like say, um, like if it's a movie or something and someone from Africa and they have to change their accent to be like, me come from Africa and I speak like this. And I'm like, we all speak like that. Really? No, like that. Not only that. Even when they do movies, <laughs> it was a TV show. I was watching. I was watching Mug the one time. Yes, and it's an episode in a a Kenyan runner who's come to the states for something, and Monk has to. Anyway, this Kenyan runner is talking to Monk. And he's not even he's not even speaking like a Kenyan language. He speaks Zulu. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just for so them, that's Africa, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's just... Yeah, yeah. Speaking I, of again, TV, oh, sorry, here Speaking of TV shows, I was watching Mind Your Language, and you know how it was one of our favorite things growing up. And there's an episode in season one. When educator comes in, this I was surprised. This thing was done in 1978, I think 2071, and I thought it was an 80s thing. Um, so this educator comes and he's black, and um, Mr. Brown mistakes him for for being at the new um, the new student. Yes. But, but this educator, when he was talking to the principal, he was speaking in like clean, like like you know, like hi, my name is uh, like nicely. But then when he went to, went to the class. Mr. Bond was like, started speaking and like, oh, hello, how are you? So now he's like, why are you talking to me like this? But then he just says, okay, then I'll just go into character. And he starts speaking and, um, like how we're expected to speak like. And then when he goes back to the British accent, they're like, oh, you're so well-spoken. Oh my gosh, I hate that. <laughs> and you're like, well-spoken for what? According to whose standards? Like well-spoken, what does that even mean? Like, I don't know why people say that you are so well-spoken for a black person. What does that mean? They literally literally don't, they literally think we are uneducated primitives, you know? Barbarians. From the the jungle. Eh, from the jungle. Like, my friend got here in 98. Um, So, Zimbabwe to London, and she goes Mm -hmm. to a school that mostly the British girls, so it's girls' school. Mm-hmm. And they're asking her in 1998, do you still live on trees? Oh, man, I used to get those in I think, like, I flew here. So like, yes, in the airport, but we live in trees. Like, for me, and that's, for me, that's why I'm like, okay, English can't be a kind of intelligence because some of the things that people say, mm. if you thought about what you're saying, yeah, you would realize, could see, so it doesn't make any sense yeah yeah that's so true and one thing that really irks me is when people t- when they, when people talk about africa the first thing's like oh my gosh i'm gonna go to a safari so for them africa equals safari and i'm like okay 
all right, we really need to educate people what Africa is because they obviously don't know what we are all about. You know, and, and, and how we also celebrate when we see a white person being able to do the guara guara, being able to do the shaku shaku, oh my gosh, we're like, oh, this one deserves land in Wakanda. This one deserves, <laughs> <laughs> they can keep the land because they can do the guara guara. And I'm like, wow, wow. I just saw a placard yeah. now for the Black Lives Matter that was written, don't do guara guara, don't do shaku shaku, don't do kupe. If you're racist, we don't want to see you dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's I think people I think we celebrate it so much because it's like finally they see something we do as a, some as something of value. Mm -hmm. But the, but then then you get the whole um, culturization thing. Whatever. Yeah, because the thing is, is it, are they seeing it as value or like like if you see if a black choreographer holds classes for African dancers and a white choreographer holds classes for African dancers, his class will be full. The black persons what won't won't be full. So are they are they appreciating our our value or they're just monetizing? Oh they're monetizing. Yeah. For sure. It's like in the fashion industry, like they have all these um free uh -huh. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then they catch a lot of money. Did you see when, when um, I don't know which label it is, I think it's uh, LV or Gucci, I don't know, when they made these bags for Masaka bag material, like the, the prints. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Marantini, Marantini. And you're like, I buy this Kumbare, guys. I buy this in the streets. Yeah, but then also at home, same border. Who can be there, which is Rabo Marantini, you'd cry. Because it's not, it's not. Exactly. There's no Makisa from an Erenkini. And then now that I'm in the West and some Western person has said this is fashion, you're like, yeah, Renkini. Yes. yes, and it's like a thousand oh, bucks. Renkini, I'm not catching on to any of this. It's for stuff in the loft, it's not for. Yeah, we, 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 have, we have a long way to go as African people and as Black people as well. So, yeah. yeah. So just um, go straight into the main topic that obviously most people probably want to know because I'm always championing and saying, I am so proud of my sister for what she has done. And I'm happy that you've done it because when I have kids, I will just be like, please help me. <laughs> How t tell us a bit about your family, Mrs. Hassanin. Is it my children's? Yes. And, ah. and their heritage and okay uh i have three children three what yeah. you have three, three? yes the oldest the two boys and then a baby girl oh wow um the oldest is four uh -huh. and then the second one is two you know after the two years two years <laughs> And and then we got a twelve week old baby girl. Oh wow, really? That's amazing. Okay, okay. I'm just doing it. So uh mom is Zimbabwean. Uh-huh. Uh dad is from Finland. Okay. And um we live in London. We met here, we got married here. We live here. And uh and how long have you been married for? It will be 10 years in July, y'all. Oh my goodness, a day? <gasps> How? 10 years, 10 years. Um, oh my gosh, so 10 years of marriage. Okay, tell us more. Yeah, we met 11 years ago. Okay. And, um, so I'll tell you, uh, before I met him, right, I had this, debate uh -huh. like actually discussion with a friend and i was talking about how i would never marry a man younger than me because they're not serious about settling down if i'm gonna meet a guy and i'm gonna with anyone they're gonna be two to ten years older okay well he is three years younger what 
Mwana yuko Zimbabwe. Oh my gosh. But here we are 10 years later and three children later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, listen kids, age ain't nothing but a number. Age ain't nothing but a number. A number. It's a more maturity thing, isn't it? Mhm. Mhm. Yeah, I learned that. In it. But I, I want you to understand my my passion for wanting to make sure that my kids write out a show now. Mm-hmm. I think when we're at home, I, I know, when we're at home, when we're in high school, it was much cooler to be westernized. Mm-hmm. Listening to music, Eco America, Coke on the Beat. And for, for me personally, I was from two worlds because mm-hmm. I'm not from a very well off family. Yeah. That's but then I went to a private school and it was like two different worlds and I was so my own world we like Bengi Bengi like Bengi Bengi actually I remember I had this initiation when I became a boarder and because they knew I liked Bengi Bengi they made fun of me and I, I did the song and people were laughing at me man I don't know the story God, you. Uh, but, but I don't know, you just sort of acclimatize and you, you choose, you know, you, you have to like fit into the environment. Yeah. It didn't really kill my love for my bigger, bigger stuff. <laughs> I sort of push it down, and you think. Yeah. And then you, and because we, we had this thing, Kuti, the West is more advanced, so things are better there. Mm-hmm. But we went to Australia and realized that, you know, they also pee in the subways. <laughs> like, it was just like, I, I, I became proudly Zimbabwean uh-huh. after I left Zimbabwe. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's when I was like, I like my chest. So, you know, like, we suddenly find all my Zim music. Mm, we suffered with this girl, I'm telling you. I wanted my music, eh? And it's Chifundo. Chifundo, mama, yeah. But, but also what I found was, especially in Australia, you have, you have like, uh, Greek community, Italian community, Croatian community, like that. Mm-hmm. And, which is why you can find Munan, who's been in Australia for however many years, but they have such a strong Italian uh-huh. accent. Strong accent. Okay. Like, it seemed to me like, to me that people were really proud of who they are and where they come from. Yeah. Even if they're Australian, they were Australian Italian or whatever, like, they were very proud of where they're from. Mm-hmm. But I jumped on board in Zimbabwe. And then I came to London. And then I met my husband and his family are also very proudly Finnish. Uh-huh. Okay. And so like, you know, like if you're, if you're happy and proud of where you're from, there's no way you're not going to talk about it and try and teach your kids about it. I have a, an example here, Vudzi. Okay. <laughs> I'm reading this post mm-hmm. from this mom and she was saying, she was very bothered that her daughter didn't like her afro and mm-hmm. she she seemed to only want straight hair because, because she wanted to fit in or something yeah, yeah. and it was only when the mom realized could she who she was trying to talk to her daughter about this so i'm just i'm, I'm you know stop texting it but yeah. she started talking to her about hair she, she and she realized that because you the mother always had wigs and straightened hair and you know uh-huh. always her afro yeah Ruta was proud of her afro the yeah. mom had to take off her weave mm-hmm. and now we both so when she was posting she was saying yeah me and my daughter now are donning our african you know our afro hair mm-hmm. so in 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 your joy and proudness of exploring your culture yeah i think that's how you can pass it on to your kids exactly exactly so, with uh, with my children, I just we I just decided because I knew that mm-hmm. the Finnish parents were just going to they were going to teach them, and I was like, I'm going to teach them Shona too. Yeah, 
literally you just choose to speak to them in Shona. Exactly. Because but, we had we had some parents who were like, but the kids don't want to speak Shona. And I'm like, I was like, I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to let my sister judge because she's the one who's a friend. I'm not a parent. So I would let I, I, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's my house. I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Because they are, they are my children. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is my house. I know that when they get older, they're teenagers, they might what, what, but ultimately now, when I can, if I teach them Shona now until they're teenagers, then they have 13 years of speaking Shona. Yeah. If they, they start saying we don't want to speak Shona, they have it. Exactly. No way. So now, when I am definitely the one in charge and I don't have to deal with teenage angst and I don't have to deal with people who know everything, <laughs> I know everything and I'm teaching them everything. I yeah. Yeah. So, but how do, so after you've decided that, okay, fine, when I have my kids, I'm going to start, I'm going to teach them Shona. How did you go about it? Do you like, like don't speak English at all? What about the Finnish side? How do you handle that as well? So, so my children actually speak three languages now. The at ones four speak. and two? At four and two. Wow. So, uh, because when I speak to my children, I only speak Shona. Okay. And when their dad speaks to them, he only speaks Finnish. Wow. And then we are blessed enough that the grandparents, both sides are here. Mm-hmm. It also makes their world bigger. Exactly. There are other people to speak the language with. Mm-hmm. So they, they want to speak to Gogo, they want to speak to Sekuru, they want to speak to Mumo, they want to speak to Papa, that's the other side. So then they also have different kinds of languages. Because as a mom, we tend to have the same Stop hitting your brother. Put your shoes on. Put your coat on. Yeah. But then they know those. But then when they speak to their grandparents, they're like, "Let's go do this." You know, it's different, different vocabulary. Exactly. The vocabulary goes by how big their world is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's literally we just choose to say it in in Shona. Yeah. The problem, however, is to some Shona, we've been English ever since, ever since. Which means the words in Shona that, like for example, we only learned in Shona class. Yeah, exactly. There's a Shona word for tea. There's a Shona word for sugar. Because at home we'd say, your mother would say, did you get a tea? Did you call sugar? Like, What's the Shona word for tea? Shutu gadzik. Oh yeah, by the way. Yeah. I- and let me just say, <laughs> like no one says "dipet chigiri," we say "dipet sugar." So, and but then what happens in my house is because the Finns are very proudly Finnish. If I'm talking to my son and I do a Shonglish where I say an English word, my husband's like, "Is there no Shona word for that?" <laughs> oh and my god! I have to like look for like I message Daisy on the group chat. Anyone have a word for this? And it's, it's like funny because my kids will know it, uh-huh. but it means when they do engage with the Shona community, uh-huh. teach them. Exactly. What those words. Most of us grew up in Shonglish that we don't know all those words. Exactly. Like we've always said, we've always said Baskoro. We've talked about Baskoro. Uh-huh. But I asked our mom's there, my, um, our other sisters, I asked to send. Hey, you're dropping my, the nicknames. <laughs> Yeah, But guys, my family, we do nicknames. That's how we roll. Exactly. I'm to get me my Shona books. And book. And it turns out there's a Shona word for Baskoro. Would you like to know it? Yes, please. Yes. I think I have an idea, but what is and it? Bizautare. Yes, Bizautare. Like, who says that? And you know what the weird thing is, though? She teaches her kids this deep Shona words, like literally. Not even with Basco. I use both. At least with Basco and Bizauta. Because, can I tell you in the book, we have to like read the words properly. And Pakan's yeah. Bizauta. Right. But then he also knows Kuti Basco because when we're riding outside, it's not Basco. So uh-huh. he knows both words. 
And then some of our Shona books, like Takashi Dachka. But my book at Vega Piwa not Dafi. So you have to come there. On some of them I just choose to say around Dakam Dzisa, but on some of them they take Dafi Dachka, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, I will say this, I was speaking to the kids last week and I was speaking in English, guys, you don't speak to my kids. No. <laughs> and I literally just like, thinking about it. The world is big. It's not, it's not, it's not some secret language. Yeah. With their mom. We have a whole country yeah. of people, you know? That's true. And even when you hear them speak, like you can, like I was commenting Payakuti when, when you when you put food for them and then you went off a little bit and then the older brother was had had food in his mouth and I was like, ah, tango ameza and then Abba ameza and then he said, I died. <laughs> like, hey, I don't know why they you just speak and then over time, like when you start, mm -hmm. you, you, you don't, you, you don't see the fruit straight away, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sowing a seed. I'm sowing a seed. And it's known, it's like, we now have it recorded, Kunoku, because there's so many cultures and stuff. And they actually encourage the parents, like immigrant mm -hmm. parents, uh -huh. to speak to your children in your vernacular because you're more confident in it. Exactly. So to learn a confident language first because they will always learn English Kushkoro. Exactly. But then they will tell us if kids are learning, uh, are growing up multilingual, they are going to articulate later. Mm. They have all the words in there. They understand everything. They follow my instructions, they follow their dad's instructions, but Shaibuda wasn't so clear. Mm -hmm. And then now it's getting clear. So, yeah, like, obviously, the older one who's four, mm -hmm. they can now actually speak. The three languages mm -hmm. and then the young one two and three months especially in lockdown where we've spent a lot of time together as a family uh -huh. like he's now saying a lot of stuff too and you're like oh you know yeah you were saying the other day could you, you 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 we did a video call and the young one was counted to uh one to ten in shona and then I was like, oh my gosh, you can now count in Shona one to ten. And then you said you didn't even teach him that. The older one is taught him. And he's four. And the older one and the older one's been teaching him Shona. Because every time the older one counts, the younger one copies. So now they both count in Shona. Oh man. Ugh. I'm literally beaming. I'm even more than that, my name panda. Um if, if, if I say to either of them, in Shona, in uh Kumbira Dedi Mvura, they will go to their dad, Bago Kumbira Dedi Mvura, but in Finnish, like they translate. Wow. Or if, if, it's, if it's someone who doesn't speak Shona Finnish, because now, especially with the older one, uh, who knows, sorry, so his English is getting better and better. Uh -huh. He'll, I'll tell them, say this to our friend, and he will translate and say it in English. I gotta say, he does, <laughs> because we don't have so many words, some of the words where you use the derived word, like my mm -hmm. colors, um, mm -hmm. like I purposefully say them the accent, right? <laughs> but it means that now he, he, he came home one day and he's like, Mama, taena kwa assembly. <laughs> Like, yeah, baby, assembly, that's where we're at. Because what's the word for assembly? I can't teach you that. Um, and that's other thing, like my colors. Yeah. Chena, chena. Bulu. Bru. Oh, oh, I'm the, I think one time I'm going to see, mom's my twin, mom's going uh -huh. like, you'd say, kalayatsito for gray. Okay. Kalayo. For green, kalayadenga, oh, rudzi, rudzi, not kala. Uh -huh. But we don't actually have words for it. Exactly. Like, 
they they thought he didn't know my colors and i was like oh he knows all the names in finnish ah. I have a few names for them but in any i only have Chukutema. <laughs> and you know like um i was even saying it i think i said it on the live that because we work with foundational stage one until year eight and when you see the fs ones which is like, like three four years they can speak if it's Urdu, if it's uh, if it's Punjab, if it's Hindu, Arabic. They speak it so fluently, and then it's the English that they have to learn. And then when you see them, because we will have like kids from all over the world, when you see them during break time, they know Kuti. This one is from Egypt, so they speak Arabic. This one is from India, so they speak this. But then you see the the black kids in the school, they ca- they can't speak their vernacular. They can't. Yeah. They speak English really, chatting. Mm-hmm. But you see, these other kids are speaking all these other languages. You have kids who can speak Arabic, Urdu, and English. And now they're learning French at school. Wow. So it's like, like you were saying, Kuti, you can only be confident when you're speaking your own language. And it's easier to even explain um, schoolwork to them in their home language because English is hard, guys. <laughs> well, is it? It is. It is. Actually, yeah, I guess they're all hard. But what you find more with kids, like after one term uh-huh. in nursery, because then he's surrounded by English speaking kids. Uh-huh. His English was like skyrocketing. <laughs> and before, like, I used to look after a, a German boy uh-huh. who's the same age as my son. So they were playing together. Uh-huh. And I would speak to both of them in Shona. Like, so they both yes. understood Shona. She should do that also. I've, I've, I've taught many kids Shona here. But then, when they were playing by themselves, they would be speaking broken English to each other. And like, I didn't teach them to say, i playing, i running. <laughs> teach them that. But they got it from just play groups and yeah. picking it up. Mm-hmm. And then now that's nursery and he's with an actual teacher. Like now he knows to say I am running or whatever, but mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't need to teach him English. Yeah, yeah. He, he learned because of the country we are in. Mm-hmm. I guess the helpful tip that we were given by, um, so my husband was Finnish. He grew up in Finland, and okay. they had this family friend who was an American. Okay. Married a Finnish woman, so they raised their family in Finland. Okay. And American said when he had his kids, he was determined that they would learn English because it's a Finnish country. They're going to learn Finnish anyway. Exactly. What he used to do was he would not respond to the kid unless they speak to him in English. You know what that reminds me of? Uh. It reminds me of daddy. When what you, you would, when you would serve him, and then if you don't like he would not respond to you <laughs> so it works because then you'll be like exactly so it works actually yeah, yeah but that's that's really how he did it he would he would not respond until they say in English. And now he had children who could speak fluent English and fluent Finnish. Yeah, hey, we, 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 we have a, a lot of work to do because even some people will be like, I don't have the time to teach them Shona. And I'm like, it's not like you're having a full time lesson with them, right? No, it's cool written. It's literally whatever you were going to say to them, say it in Shona. Mm-hmm. That is so true. My sister should and, and it, it's nice. like not, It's not too late to teach. Like, oh, my kid is already five now. Well, they can pick up the words. I mean, we learn, like, say, we learn French in high school. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. That it's, is it's, it's, and it's the repetition of hearing, That's you know, the things you say all the time. The, if they learn it late, what's probably going to happen is they can't, they won't be able to pronounce my typically Shona sounds and actually know. <laughs> Pido, you know, Pida. and Jaja, Jaja, Jaja. 
you actually you know like my 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 friends who are Philippines like they asked me the other day do you have a a, a, um, a Shona alphabet and I was like Shona alphabet <laughs> I was like no I think it's because we we were a British you know colony and stuff so we we just do the <laughs> English twenty six letters because I mean. And they're like, no, we have a we have a Tagalog alphabet. And all I know is mommy me momu. which is actually phonics as well. Yes, so, phonics, yeah. <laughs> so we don't have an alphabet in Shona. A B A B C D. But maybe they couldn't say A B because for us it's A. Uh-huh. It's not an A. Mm-hmm. A, A B C D A A E O. Because, you know, like, when, when I started, because, I mean, when I started working in a school, to be honest, I didn't even, I had forgotten what the I-A-E-O-O is phonics. Um, I just thought it was just part of, you know, I didn't even know there was a name to that. So now I'm trying to, to, to teach the kids, because I work with um, the, um, the special needs children the most, and now trying to, to, to sound the phonics to them. And in my head, I'm like, wait, is it? Uh, and they're saying even a word like H. We say H, and then in the English uh, curriculum they say H. And I'm like, H. What is this? H was Australian. We say H. Yeah. But yes, I H H. Yeah. And then they'll be like <laughs> words for certain things. I remember, like we, my 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 pepper is my green pepper, red pepper. We we have, we grew up in a red pepper and green pepper. Yeah, exactly. Capsicum. Exactly. That's what they and call it. Yeah. And then it's pepper. <laughs> or or is nachi and mandarin the same thing? I think so. But see, it's just so we had nachi for all the small oranges. We don't have different ones. Mm. Whereas here, there's mandarin, clementine, <laughs> easy, da, 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 but. For us, it would be just a nachi. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Mufaro was asking the other day, Kuti, um, um, zucchini, zucchini, zucchini. And I'm like, what do you call it as baby marrow? You call it what? Baby marrow. Oh, a courgette. Oh, you are even calling it courgette. That's three names already. It's the same thing. Courgette is a. I know that eggplant has a different name as well. Yeah, eggplant. It has a different name. I just know eggplant. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Not important. important. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I really, 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 really want to thank you, sis, Mrs. Chido Hassanen. This is the first time that I'm referring to you like this. Mrs. Chido <laughs> Okay, so I really want to thank Mrs. Hassanin for joining me today. We literally had to wait for the kids to go to sleep for us to be able to do this. But I thank you so much for doing this. I hope people learned something from this. Guys, let's let's make let's be intentional about teaching our kids our culture and our vernacular languages. And you know, so that they can speak. Look at now my nephews speak Shona, English, and Finnish. And who knows, by the time they reach secondary, they'll be speaking French and other languages as well. So Mrs. Hassanin, do you have any last words for my my people? Um, go well, ahead, yeah, just we, we need to be proud of where we come from because like I actually have an Australian passport now. Mm-hmm. So if you ask me where you're from or what the ethnicity, my answer is I'm actually supposed to be Australian because that's my passport. Uh-huh. I can tell you that everyone who asks me where I'm from and I say Australia, they will always ask, and where were you before that? <laughs> maybe to do with my accent, maybe with my color of my skin. We always ask, and so our children will always be asked, exactly. which is the way. Way so yeah. Oh yeah. Even if they speak like this year and the British year, they will always be asked. Oh, and where did your family come from before mm-hmm. that? Because mm-hmm. we're in the West, and it's known that we don't belong here. We came from somewhere else. Exactly. Exactly. And for that reason, we need to teach our children where they come from. I mean, I know the language is not the measure of the beginning and end of 
how Zimbabwean is. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's important that our kids can appreciate where they come from and yeah. it will appreciate where they come from if we don't show them that we appreciate where we come from. Exactly. So even if you can't, even if you can't find the time to be talking to them in Shona, I just play a lot of Zimbabwean music as well. Mm. So they sing Shona songs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, it's the music, it's the fashion, it's our hair, it's the yeah. language. But we need to own it and embrace it and not just kind of don't get you baranzi beans We didn't used to think like that at home, we did. I'm saying that I'm quite a quite music. Like, yeah, go to jail, and, you know. <laughs> but the other thing that I need that I need to say is, uh, sister, sister, Makati, you're going to learn to count one to ten in six. Uh, Can you count one to ten in six? Not yet. I'm working on it. Don't put me on the spot like this. I'm working on it. <laughs> yes. I, I, I never had family as your gifts. I'm telling you. <laughs> But did anyone send you the, the numbers or not? Um, they've, someone's going to send me tomorrow. Do you want to send me? Do you want to teach me? In the Bele, no. Ellie, Lola. I know it's in the Bele song, but no. Okay. Well, once I learn, I will also teach you because you obviously need the lesson as well. Yeah, all right. Okay. I, want, <laughs> I wanted to say, I forgot to say this, like, one of the the good things about teaching your kids in the diaspora as a native language is, is when when look at what's happening right now with Corona and everything. Lots of, lots of people have lost their jobs. People are getting laid off. When it comes the time where they are like, okay, fine, we need to go back to your own country. You go back there. The cult, the your children have to culture shock, and then they can't communicate with anyone. Now you use our appetite to start speaking to your kids in English. Yeah. Whereas if the, if you already if they already know Sean, even if they don't speak it, if they understand it, it's easier. Mm -hmm. I know I've met kids who are like fifteen who cannot speak. Sha, you actually go to this kitchen, they're like, Are oh, you from Zimbabwe indeed? Should we say and then they just look at you like and I'm like, Really? Yeah, I mean most of the most of my kids' cousins here don't speak any Shona. So if they're going to have a Shona conversation with any family members, it is going to be with aunties and uncles mm. with their cousins. And they get wisdom. <laughs> Which means they miss out on like the playing vocabulary. Uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. Shame. But okay. they're, 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 now, they're getting old enough to play together. So. Yeah. Thank you once again. Um, please uh, like, subscribe, comment, share, and we'll see you on the next episode of Let's Talk Africa with Miss Spider. Bye. <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> Bye. <laughs>